Hi, I'm Christine Benz from Morningstar.com. T. Rowe Price has been crowded out of the spotlight in recent years as investors have flocked to passively managed products, but Morningstar's Director of Manager Research, Russ Kinnell, still thinks the firm has a lot to offer. He's here with me today to discuss some of his favorite T. Rowe Price funds. Russ, thanks for being here. Good to be here. Russ, um, let's talk about T. Rowe Price. I, I, as I mentioned, um, the asset flows haven't been there as most investors, many investors have been gravitating to index products. But let's talk about what's been going on behind the scenes at T. Rowe Price. There have been some notable manager departures as well as executive departures as well, correct? That's right. Well, Brian La Rogers, their, their leader, has, has retired. And yes. as we've discussed before, a number of their managers are uh, near retirement age or not too far from from when people at T. Row typically retire. And we've seen a couple more re retire. Uh, so yeah, so there is a, a transition going on. And uh, I was visiting them a year ago and I was really happy to see that they've really developed depth behind those managers. They've really improved their analyst staff. Uh, so I feel pretty good about T. Row today. Okay. And it historically has been a firm that we have felt has, has a really good cult culture internally and also um, a shareholder friendly culture. Yeah, very shareholder friendly. They're straightforward. You get exactly what they tell you they're going to deliver. The costs are pretty reasonable. Uh, when there's a manager change, they handle it really well. That is, they typically will have a transition of a couple of years as the new manager learns the ropes. And even when that new manager takes over, they tend to keep the strategy very similar. So it's pretty easy to buy one of their funds and hold on. Okay. Um, let's talk about any problem spots or areas for concern when you think about T. Rowe as a firm. You mentioned potential succession strategies. They've done a good job historically hanging on to managers, but we may see, see some more veteran managers depart before it's all over. Any other things that are on your radar? You know, it's really hard to come up with the weaknesses for T. Rowe. I'd say their international equity is maybe not quite as good as domestic. So a lot of their domestic funds, we have rated silver or gold, whereas their international tend to be more bronze rated. Okay. Um, let's get into uh, some of your favorite T. Rowe Price funds. This is not an exhaustive, inclusive no. list. There are other funds you like, but you picked out a few that you think are, are worthy of investor attention. One is T. Rowe Price QM U.S. Small Growth. Let's talk about what that QM stands for. Uh, yeah, it's it's for quantitative. They, 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 uh, uh, this is a quant strategy. They have three uh, traditional fundamental active manage small cap funds, but those are uh, tend to be closed and have a lot of money in them. So it makes sense when you have that situation to come out with a quant fund because the quant fund can generate its own uh, research and, and not uh, crowd the same stocks that the other funds are owning. Okay, so it can generally handle a little more capacity than uh, the actively managed funds can do. Um, let's talk about why in particular you think this is a good pick. Well, uh, some quant funds are kind of black boxes and it's kind of under, hard to understand, but this one's kind of straightforward fundamental. So it's things like uh, cash flow yields and uh, earnings quality and, and fairly straightforward things, a little bit of momentum, but it's a pretty small component. Uh, and they just do a really nice job, very diversified, as you say, that helps them to be uh, have a lot of capacity because they've got a lot of names. It's about 300 names with none over 1% of assets. So very diffuse portfolio, really steady uh, performer under the manager, Sudhir Nanda, uh, just a kind of consistently performing in that second quartile, which is a very T. Rowe Price-like thing to do. That's what I was do. thinking. Right, right. Um, let's look at T. Rowe Price real estate. This has long been one of our favorite uh, real estate mutual funds. Um, it's gold rated. The, the small cap growth fund you just talked about is gold rated as well. Let's talk Talk about uh, real estate. It's got a veteran manager. What else do you like about it? Uh, yeah, we don't we don't talk about a lot of sector funds here in part because they're hard to use right. and manager turnover. But again, here you've got David Lee with 20 years on the fund, consistent investor, uh, just done a really good job of of uh, you know pick, picking the right real estate names. Very straightforward, like we mentioned at the beginning, buys U.S. REITs. Uh, not a lot of uh, surprises in that portfolio, but just a consistent performer and and uh, really much you, you can really depend on what you're buying is going to be what you're going to get five years from now. And I guess that's kind of a hallmark of T. Rowe Price in general, that if you buy the mid-growth fund, it's going to have most of its assets in that mid-growth square of the style box. That's right. They, they really care about style and uh, they also will try and keep their sector managers around. They're not, it's not just a stepping stone. 
So it's a really attractive uh, place to find sector funds. Okay. Your last uh, idea is a, is a bond fund, the last fund that you like. This is T. Rowe Price Tax-Free High Yield. Let's talk about um, why you like it. it. It, too, has a veteran manager. And then I also am hoping you can spend a little bit of time talking about how such a fund can be used in the context of a broader portfolio. Sure. So uh, it's a high-yield muni fund, and obviously that means you're taking on some risk. High-yield munis uh, can be kind of treacherous every once in a while. Things go south with them, and the more aggressive ones have gotten caught up in things like Puerto Rico. Uh, but this fund has largely avoided those issues. Um, Jim Murphy has been running the fund since 01. So again, you've got a really experienced manager. Right. T. Rowe always used to the cautious side, or almost always, so uh, I like that. Diversified is always a good thing to do in a bond fund, so it's kind of, uh, you like the T. Rowe fund for uh, this kind of strategy, because most investors don't really like to lose money in their bond funds, right. so if you've got an aggressive strategy in, uh, in a high-yield munis, it's nice to have one that at least doesn't go too far and is aware of the risks and, and doesn't take any big risks for you. Okay. But nonetheless, this is not the type of fund that I would want to own as my own my whole muni fund. I should have high-quality exposure and maybe use this around the margins? Exactly. I, so I think this is a smaller part of a portfolio because you do have credit risk. Munis are kind of a quirky area. I would not want to go a whole hog in, into a high yield muni. They're naturally sensitive to credit issues. So if you go back to 08, you'll see there were some significant losses in this fund and pretty much every high yield muni fund. So uh, you don't want to make it a core holding. I think it is more of a role player. Okay, Russ, thank you so much for being here to discuss your picks today. You're welcome. Thanks for watching. I'm Christine Benz from Morningstar.com.